Welcome back. This is the Big Blue Banter, New York Giants football podcast. I'm Dan Schneier, joined as always by my co-host Nick Filato. Tonight we're here to break down the defense on the All-22 Coaches film against the Eagles. Not the prettiest game, probably their ugliest defensive performance of the year. We'll bury the tape like the Giants have after this one, but we did want to get through it first. Nick, before we dive into it, let's briefly discuss anything that you may have taken away from the film that you didn't maybe know on the broadcast angle. Not necessarily anything that I didn't know, but I just felt like the New York Giants finally met their match. Like we were getting by as a team that was being competitive against Dallas. It's a good football team, right? But they forced those two interceptions in the first half and the Giants go into halftime leading. And we're like, wow, what the hell is going on here? But against Philadelphia, I think the writing was on the wall that the Philadelphia Eagles are the real deal. They're going to be one of the, what? two teams that are going to be favored to win the Super Bowl. If Jalen Hurts continues to progress the way he has progressed, it's going to be scary for years to come. And I just felt like Giants just didn't have the personnel really anywhere except for in the defensive line. But when you run as much GH counter as the Eagles run, it's difficult to defend them because it's going to force your linebackers into a spot that is disadvantageous and the edge rushers into a spot where they have to contain. And I'll say one other thing. They were running at Aziz Ojolari. <laughs> they were really, anytime 51 was on the football field, they were going after him, and he needs to develop that part of his game. Yeah, he definitely does. It might be a size issue. I don't know if that will ever develop. Hopefully it will. A thing I learned the most in this game is they had a really good counter for our only strength left on defense. Our only strength left is those two edge guys in pass rush situations, and really the entire defensive line. You include Lawrence in that in pass rush situations, but the counter to that is if your quarterback can throw with anticipation on a consistent basis. And this is something I was very surprised to see, man. I only last time I saw Jalen hurts tape was last year when he played the giants and he doesn't look like the same quarterback at all. Now some could say, Oh, well he has AJ Brown now, but he still had that same offensive line last year. He still had Devonta Smith. And if you watch the film and you apply any kind of like knowledge to the situation, you know that it's not just because A.J. Brown is on the field that he's taken this big jump. He has done it himself. Like, he wasn't throwing with that kind of anticipation on a consistent basis last year. He wasn't throwing with that kind of accuracy on a consistent basis last year. And the anticipation killed what the Giants had because some of those pass rush situations, they were close to Hurts. They were damn close to getting to him. But he threw the ball before the wide receiver got out of the break, and that's how you beat a pass rush, just anticipatory throwing from the quarterback. So... I was actually incredibly impressed with Jalen Hurts on film. I still think I would give the title to Geno Smith as the best quarterback film I saw of an opponent on the Giants this year, but Hurts would certainly be number two for me. Yeah, Hurts' ability to rush, too. You can see how dynamic it was. There was one play that I just put on Twitter where I felt like the Giants had a good red zone call against the Philadelphia Eagles, who coming into this game had the second highest run rate in the red zone, where they allowed Aziz Ojolari, Wink Martindale did, and... Kayvon Thibodeau to run high side and to use their speed and explosiveness in an attempt to try and beat Lane Johnson and Jordan Mayalata up the pass rushing arc. And in doing so, that prompted Jalen Hurts to just tuck the football and run. But I felt like it was a good job by Wink Martindale to have who is it, Michael McFadden and Jalen Smith just quarterback spying and then man coverage with one guy kind of helping out and double teaming A.J. Brown, who was a solid red zone play. But other than that one play where Jalen Hurts got in trouble and ended up getting sacked on some of those design quarterback runs, he doesn't even seem like he's moving fast, but he's covering so much ground and he does such a good job to avoid taking big hits. Like this is the type of like Russell Wilson running quarterback that just never really takes big hits, but just gets huge chunk gains. And it's a huge part of what this offense does. And that is a good point because like you can get injured anyway in the NFL. Kyler Murray last night, unfortunately, towards ACL, just not even taking a hit. But you also can get injured taking hits. We've seen Daniel Jones get injured taking hits. We've seen tons of quarterbacks get injured when they don't protect their body as a runner. I like that point you made. I think he does do a good job of kind of that Russell Wilson style where you're running and you're creating yards for your team, but you're not taking big hits, which keeps you on the field. So let's dive into the tape. The first thing I want to say before we dive in is we are on. I am on a time crunch tonight. I have to join a CBS live stream at some point pretty soon. So I may not finish this podcast out. Also, just like the last one, we're not the garbage time plays. We're just going to run through as we get to superlative. So start with the plays that mattered early in the game. We start off here first and 10. The Eagles got the ball for or the Eagles got the ball and drove right down 14 plays, 84 yards. Starts off with just quick game. Good little good little uh, 14 yard or 13 yard gain here to Caltera. Yep. 
Grant Calcaterra, the rookie tight end with an Italian last name. This is just a simple half field read where Jalen Smith is going to match Miles Sanders to the flat. Calcaterra has leverage to the inside. And once Jalen Smith clears the window to match Miles Sanders, he turns on the quick hitch. And you could see Jalen Hurts had a couple of options in 12 personnel to hit right in front of the Giants linebackers and the defensive back right there. Just a good 13 yard gain to start the game. Yeah, a little curl flat. I think it was funny last night. I don't want to diverge too much, but I was watching the Manning cast and Eli was talking about how like the Patriots ran like a simple quick game slant flat. And he's like, this was the best concept I saw them put on film when I watched them. I was like, dear God, <laughs> that must be painful for you to have watched that Patriots tape with Patricia and Judge running that offense. Like he's talking about how like slant flat was the best concept he saw them put on tape. But uh, let's get back to the game here. Starts with a GT lead here for four yards. Uh, Giants blitz Jefferson on this one. and. Uh, they the Eagles create a four yard gain. Yeah, Hun Henry Mondu does a good job after uh, blocking down on the tight front. Henry Mondu from the backside kind of sifts through the traffic to get to Miles Sanders. But you can see how this is just the guard and the tackle are both going to pull. They're going to skip pull, stay square to the line of scrimmage. You're going to have the guard who's leading G lead kick out Kayvon Thibodeau, and then Mylotta comes right into the gap to take on Tony Jefferson. And this could have been a bigger play, and the Giants really struggle with this type, these types of runs and counter runs and anything that has any sort of pulling. But I felt like the Giants fit this a little bit better, primarily because Tony Jefferson was heading into that gap anyways. So that's up a second and six. The Giants go with a three deep look on the second and six, and Jalen Hurts just takes what's available to him, which is uh, Miles Sanders in the flat, and it's an 11 yard gain for a first down. Yeah, Miles Sanders just runs a quick little route off the play action. Giants, look how deep the Giants drop the depth at this point. This is a second and six play. You can see how there's a lot of attention being paid to the deep portions of the field. A.J. Brown has a safety over the top. You see Fabian Moreau kind of midpointing those two wide receivers on the outside, and there's just no one to pick up Miles Sanders. Take what the defense gives you, and the Giants gave him a lot here for a first down. These are the types of plays where if the Giants are able to add some speed and athleticism to the linebacker, they can go for four or five instead of 11 yards because that speed and athleticism replacing a McFadden, no offense, who I think is okay. I, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. He's by far the least favorite rookie I've seen play, and I'm not certain he's going to be any kind of thing in the NFL. I think the speed is just a little different for him at this level, but those are the types of plays where you want the linebacker to be a little bit more instinctive get there a little faster i know it's a tough play he's got to cover so much ground from there to there but it happens right i've seen athletic linebackers turn this into a four or five or six yard gain so i'm wondering if this is more on see it's tough though because you have basically julian love outside the hashes as the only player in the curl flat that middle hook between the hash and the and numbers he's so like, deep too. and he's so deep because he has to help out fabian moreau because you have two vertical releases from the philadelphia eagles to the field side so fabian moreau just has to midpoint those two even though you have a safety who is hovering over the top you can't see on the screen with aj brown but Julian Love wants to undercut the curl of Devonta Smith. And that's exactly what Devonta Smith ends up running. And the Miles Sanders is just wide open. Michael McFadden doesn't get there quick enough. And I agree with you on Michael McFadden, albeit I think he had an okay game fitting the run, which is something I he feel did. like that's been consistent throughout his entire rookie season is his ability to fit the run. It's just yes. in space. It's it's not necessarily the most natural He's thing. He's a fine player moving forward. He's just not a great player moving laterally. Um, and exactly. we knew that coming in, but now I think it just, when you watch so much tape, you can see it more here. You just see a little zone read action and it is a nine yard gain actually out of this one for the Eagles set up a second and one. Yeah, this is going to be zone read. It's going to be a kind of like a bash type of run where the back is running away and then you pull both the guard and the tackle similar to what we saw before. Only now Jalen hurts is going to keep it. The back is away. Jalen Hurts keeps it, and you can see that the Giants at this point, they're kind of getting gashed a little bit. They're not in their tight front. They're not in their base personnel. They have a nose in Dexter Lawrence over the top of Kelsey, and then you have Mondu as a three technique, and they run basically right at Mondu, get an easy double team, pull the backside guys, and now you have a bunch of blockers on Giants. Like, look, you have one, two, three, four, five, six blockers with Jalen Hurts behind them, and then one, two, three, four, five Giants. So you have such an advantage if you're the Philadelphia Eagles on this play. Could have even went for a longer gain, but I think Pinnock and Dexter Lawrence end up making the tackle. Sets up a second and one. Giants play with like a little bit of like a cover six look, and you'll just see kind of a quick spot to Pascal. Just once again, Jalen Hurts uh, just taking what's given to him. Yeah, because... 
this was played well by the Giants, by Darnay Holmes, who's over the top of Zach Pascal in the slot. And Darnay Holmes presses Pascal, and then he sees Miles Sanders go into the flat. So then he abandons it. And this is like simple quarterback play. Just read what's in front of you. But look at Jalen Hurts just realize, all right, Darnay Holmes is off of him. Now I have the space between him and the linebacker. It's a quick bang, bang, strike type of play. But you have to be really reactive in those situations. And I mean, I'm not to, we're probably going to praise Jalen Hurts a lot on this podcast, but I feel like it's very warranted because he's really developed his game from what we saw last year. Yeah. And you're right to do and Look, we're not here to, this is, we're not here to evaluate Jalen Hurts versus Jones. This is not our objective here. We're evaluating how the Giants defense looks and the players on the field across from them. So if we see good quarterback play, we're going to call it out. That's the point of this show. It's not, a, it's not a Giants fan show. It's just a, because we, we don't like Jalen Hurts. We hate the Eagles, Nick and I, but that doesn't mean we can't praise him if he's playing good. Like, it's just the, that's just how it is. So that sets up a first down. You get a cover three look here from the Giants pre-snap. Um, and we're going to see them take a shot to A.J. Brown here, and it's an incomplete pass. This was probably one of his worst balls, Jalen Hurts. I know he's running to his left, opposite shoulder for a righty, but not his best throw. No, it's not. And the Giants drop... Jihad Ward off the line of scrimmage. You could see how they rotate Michael McFadden to a zone, and then they bring the other the other side. They have kind of like a simulated pressure with Jalen Smith blitzing. And Jalen Hurts is credit. He senses this, and he rolls out. But I felt like Jihad Ward in his 290-pound frame does a good job kind of closing down on him. Yeah. Brown is always going to outrun Micah McFadden in these types of situations. It's just the ball was just a little low, and it was not caught. It was catchable, but it was not caught. Sets up a second and 10 situation. Finally, Giants get a little momentum on defense. Um, maybe they can get off the field. This is just a four-yard little catch by Boston Scott here, and it's a good open field tackle by Julian Love to save this from going for more. Yeah, the Eagles are in empty, and they have a bunch at the numbers and just decide to throw three-on-three three with uh, with two Boston Scott, and Julian Love just does a really good job, as you said, rallying and making the tackle. And you can see how Julian Love kind of stepping up where – Xavier McKinney was before just yeah. directing Micah McFadden as to where to be. He's pointing at Micah McFadden like, look, we have a we have a bunch over here. You need to get in position. You need to get over here. Micah right. McFadden still doesn't necessarily seem like he knows exactly where to be. And that's com I mean, that's not too uncommon for a rookie, I wouldn't say. Sets up a third and six. This is one of those plays we referenced at the beginning of the podcast where you just see the difference in this passing game than a lot of other passing game. It's the timing, right? <laughs> Jalen Hurts throws this ball before Devontae Smith gets out of his break. He is throwing to a spot. He's not waiting for the wide receiver to get open. He's throwing the receiver open with confidence and anticipation. And it's hard to stop. When a team is doing that, it's almost impossible to stop when they're working at a, well, at least if they're consistently throwing with anticipation and catching balls with anticipation, like you see on this one. This coverage is so tight from Fabian Moreau. It's just a quick out route that goes for seven yards to Devonta Smith. Just elite timing from Jalen Hurts right here. Like, first off, look at Tony Jefferson just get uprooted by Jason Kelsey. Poor guy at that moment. That's that's a that's a rough look on tape. But watch how tight this coverage is. You look at it from this angle. Yeah. Fabian Moreau is in great position and it's that close. It is a split second away from being knocked away by Fabian Moreau with that near hand, but the ball just gets to Devonta Smith with elite precision and timing. And it's out before he gets into his out route. So before he gets into well, his break. So it's well just, out. Yeah. Well out. Yep. It's just a really, again, that's just hard to stop. Like if that's going to happen. That's not against the giants. Moreau did that. Moreau probably should get like a perfect grade for that coverage. And it doesn't matter because it's a six, it doesn't matter. It's a seven, a six yard conversion on third and six. It's just a great throw. Um, elite, elite throws and, and catches are going to Trump coverage every time. Yep. Every time. And so it sets up a first and 10, another cover three look. Uh, Eagles really going pass heavy on this drive. They come out with another pass here, call here. Uh, not much available, so they check down for three yards to Watkins underneath. Yeah, if we look at the coverage, too, from the Giants, Giants go into sort of a middle-of-the-field closed look. Just looks like cover three. They're matching, and I felt like they did a pretty good job, especially I think that's Tony Jefferson in the middle of the field. He sees Devonta Smith kind of loop to the inside. He sits, and then he is also in the window of 81. 
I think Hurts at this point, he's already deciding to throw the football to Quez Watkins. Quez Watkins is basically chilling at the line of scrimmage, has a ton of separation. But A.J. Brown is entering at the numbers an in-breaking route where he would have been open if Hurts would have thrown that football. It would have went for like a 10-yard gain instead of a 3-yard gain. Yep. Good point. So it sets up a 2nd and 7 situation here. Um, interesting look from the Giants pre-snap. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage that like amoeba look that you've heard before, but then they're going to drop into like what I thought was like a zone coverage. Um, and I thought it was a good play by Jalen Smith, who actually Jalen Smith caught a lot of praise on Twitter from Carl Banks, former Giants linebacker, friend of the show who we've done a podcast with Hall of Famer to be. And I was like, that was why after he said that I was kind of like keeping my eye on Smith this entire film. And I kind of agree with Carl. I thought this was a pretty good game from Smith. It was better than some of his other games. This was yeah. one of the more impressive. This is a really plays. nice play, right? A very nice play. Jalen Smith is bailing at the line of scrimmage. Has to look. You could see how he flashes his eyes to the two receiver side, the field side, to see if there's anybody crossing his face. But he has a receiver come from the backside in Devonta Smith, obviously a phenomenal athlete, a Heisman Trophy winner. And he's able to cut off the angle. That's right. very impressive. A very athletic tackle from Jalen Smith. And we've seen plays like this from Smith in the past this season. He's good in these types of areas, right? When he is in space, when he can leverage his athletic traits. And he takes a really good angle, which is a testament to his processing. And so that sets up a third down where Fabian Moreau gets called for a hold. So it's now we're going to take us to a first and 10 here. The Eagles are going to run a little RPO action. You're going to see McFadden bite on it on the run fake. And that kind of opens up that area of the field and that passing lane for just an easy pitch and catch 11 yarder here because there's a vacated zone where McFadden should be. You know, I hate to admit this, but it's so much fun watching Jason Kelsey play football. He's one of those offensive linemen, similar to Lane Johnson. He's old are, too now. It's crazy how good he is at this age still. That's the part like, that's... Yeah, he's so quick. Well, look how he just kicks out after he snaps the football, just takes one step off that foot and then just drives right into Jalen Smith. If this was a if this was a run, even though Jalen Smith does a good job positioning himself at the line of scrimmage to take on the lead blocker, Miles Sanders might be able to explode through that gap still, depending right. on what came on Thibodeau can do against my lot. Thibodeau's pretty good in those situations. I feel like Thibodeau had another pretty damn good game. And I don't know why they, it seems like there's like negativity around him on Twitter. It just doesn't really make any sense to me. I think he's a really good football player. Yeah, that's stupid. He was amazing against Dallas. Austin Gale, who doesn't even cover the giants or have any relation to them said it was the best film he's seen of any rookie edge rusher. I would agree. I thought he, he didn't match that, but he came damn close in this game. He had a really good game in this one, better than Ojolari from what I saw. Um, so it sets up. Did we just run the first and 10 play here? Right, here's uh, yeah. the first and 10. Yep. No gain. Good run stop from the Giants. Speaking of Kayvon Thibodeau, Kayvon Thibodeau slants inside of Mylotta, gets knocked into 69 Landon Dickerson, and then somehow gets skinny enough to get his hand on Miles Sanders. You could also see Julian Love just position himself right into the C gap. Miles Sanders tries to spin off, and then Michael McFadden's right there to make the tackle. So a solid run defense right there from the New York Giants rushing defense that struggled all day. And on cue, a really good play from Kayvon Thibodeau. We were just <laughs> yeah, talking right? about him. And then like, on cue, he <laughs> makes a really good play. Second and 10, though. Maybe the Giants can off the, get off the field. So condensed red zone situation. Nope. Tight window throw here. Really just, this is just like, how much do you trust your receiver here? And do you trust your just ability here? Look at where he releases the ball. Like when he releases this football, He's not throwing to an open receiver. He's not throwing no. at all to an open receiver. He's throwing to a spot here. This is another anticipatory throw from Jalen Hurts, despite Jalen Smith being in the passing window. That's just that's some impressive stuff. I know it's only a seven yarder, but this looks a lot different than your normal seven yard slant where there's no one in the passing lane and you're and the receiver's open by the time you throw the ball. This is throwing a guy open. Exactly. And let's look at Jalen Hurts' eyes on this play because he starts by looking to his left. He sees that Jalen Smith might be coming on the blitz. Jalen Smith bails. And then watch how he checks to his right. He looks at Micah McFadden to see what Micah McFadden is doing. He's like, Micah McFadden is moving to his left. So now I know that throwing window is going to be open as Jalen Smith's Smith moves to the right. And then he delivers this football, just as you said. That is just beautiful. That's a beautiful play from Jalen Smith. And he also was peering, if we look at the sideline, at that other slant that's in the end zone. I'm not quite sure who that wide receiver is. I don't think it's Devonta Smith. We'll see it a little bit better on the sideline angle, but just an elite overall play just with a quick little, a quick little slant. That's all, all this is. Yeah. And you can see how AJ Brown runs it. He stutters his step right before he breaks and then he goes underneath 
the release of Devonta Smith to create the traffic for Nick McLeod to work over the top of. And Jalen Smith just over pursues the window. Just an excellent play from the Eagles. Like look at when AJ Brown catches his football. There are three giants in the immediate area, basically yeah. forming a triangle around AJ Brown. That's crazy. Yep. And that's what we're talking about here. When we're talking about this film being really strong from a quarterback standpoint, um, here we have Miles Sanders with the touchdown run right after it. Yeah, Sanders just takes this one right in against the New York Giants. You have Justin Ellis out there, just elite blocking down on Henry Mondu from the Philadelphia Eagles. They align in basically a really reduced bunch, and they just all block down, and Sanders finds the cutback lane. Kayvon Thibodeau is the one player who gets his hand on Sanders, but Sanders is able to put the ball over the, over the goal line. Next, we have coming up here a 12 play, 91 yard touchdown drive from the Eagles. They just went 14 and 84 for a touchdown. Now they go on their next possession, 12 for 91 and a touchdown. Just unfortunate stuff for the Giants here. They just weren't really able to match what the Eagles were doing on offense. And it starts here with one of the best throws of the game from Hertz that doesn't even count for anything because it was ruled out of bounds, flushed out of the pocket. Look at this freaking throw. Oh my God, drops it right over the top. Looked even better to me on the sideline angle. I was just like, I couldn't believe he made this throw, but it was ruled out of bounds. This one was to Miles Sanders. I I don't know if it was though, man. Like I don't yeah, know if it, it should have been to me. Look, he gets a one foot down, and he gets that other foot down. Like, right. I don't. Does he bobble the ball? Possibly. Like yeah, I think see on the other angle, or maybe it's on this one. The ref by him does the bobble sign, or does the juggle with his hands right here, or not him right there. See the yeah. Juggle? Yeah, so which is a funny he, sign to me. That's a funny yeah. looking sign. <laughs> he considers yeah. it a juggle. I don't know. I can't see it. Obviously, we can't see it from this all 22 angle, but regardless, man, Jesus, Jesus, what a throw this was. Empty formation on first and 10 to say, hey, we're going to throw the football. And you get Miles Sanders isolated against Jalen Smith, who is not in terrible coverage. No. Double move by Miles Sanders right there, or just like how he stopped and then went. He's turned the Jets on, blew right past. Smith and Julian Love can't get over there. And that throw is literally right on target. Let's see if he bobbles it a little bit. You can see how it, yeah, you can see how he kind of has to like hug the football. It comes off of his chest. Doesn't look like he has full control, but elite ball placement. Yeah, really crazy stuff. But second and 10, you're thinking maybe Giants can off, get off the field, but Eagles, once again, just really pass heavy game plan against the Giants. They knew they could stress these second level, second and third level players for the Giants in the pass game. Didn't have to really just rely on too much of like a run heavy approach. And so it was the opposite. And here's just a little quick game action, six yarder. Even on a play like this, this is just quick game, right? 12 personnel and you have the tight end sit right between Jalen Smith and Micah McFadden. Hertz is already throwing the football, but that's tight coverage. Like the linebackers are right there. Right. Look at AJ Brown. AJ Brown is coming across. It just didn't seem like this Philadelphia Eagles passing attack in any respect for Michael McFadden or Jalen Smith in these types of situations. They were throwing in front of them basically the entire game. Bottom of the screen, you have banjo coverage, by the way. You can see how Fabian Moreau and Julian Love, they switch their assignments once A.J. Brown goes under, under calls made. But it doesn't even matter because Jalen Hurts gets rid of the football so quickly. So that's up at third and four, and you're going to see here with something Nick called on the preview so show. We might see more cross-dog blitzes like we saw against the Bears because of the kind of quarterback Hurts is. They run a cross dog blitz here. It's a great opportunity for them to get off the field, but Jalen Hurts just makes an unbelievable throw on this one. I mean, he throws this ball well before the receiver gets out of his break. It's another anticipatory throw. That's now three that I've counted in two possessions. I sometimes go games where I don't see one from quarterbacks. This is three already in two possessions, and there's nothing you can do here. Like the Giants played this perfect. The coverage looks great. Look at the coverage. The blitz gets there. It's a great call by Wink Martindale. But when you have a quarterback throwing with anticipation and accuracy before a receiver gets out of his break, there's literally nothing you can do but hope they drop it. Absolutely. If you were to tell Wink Martindale, hey, we're going to have a free rusher on this cross dog blitz. Tony Jefferson, a defensive back, is going to have a free shot at Jalen Hurts in this situation, a third and four. Would you take it? Absolutely. And he converts it for nine yards to Quez Watkins. It's not AJ Brown. Too. Yeah, the coverage is spot on. It's not AJ Brown. It's not Devonta Smith. Right. It's just a quick out route. Fabian Moreau is right on the hip. And it's just that that throw is to the outside. Quez Watkins can use his body to kind of box out Fabian Moreau if he had to. And just an easy completion. But it shouldn't have been. <laughs> like This is a very difficult play all. to complete. Because look at him. But by the time that ball's released, he's not even out of his break. It's just, it's tough, man. It's tough to beat a quarterback when he's playing like this. And I know people aren't going to want to hear it. They're going to say, oh, it's because he has the offensive line and A.J. Brown and Smith. But 
I don't know, man. It just doesn't look like that on tape, unfortunately. And this sucks because this is a third and four. Like, you're down, what, seven nothing at this point? This is such a key moment in the game. If you can get this stop, you get off the field, you swing the momentum back, maybe you can start to change it. You have the perfect call here. This is really, in my opinion, a perfect call by Wink, right? This blitz yeah. gets there. There's no time. He has basically a second to catch the ball and get rid of it. But, you know, he does somehow find a way to get rid of it and get rid of it on time with good ball placement. So outside the is, number, I mean, outside the numbers throw too. And it's what 11 personnel. You have reduced stacks on both side and Jalen hurts is on the field side, right? And he throws this to the field and he knows he's going to have that space on this out route. Cause if you look at all the other routes, the giants had answers here. They only bring five with the cross dog blitz because cave Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari match receivers so none of those guys are rushing and they still get this free rusher and if you look at julian love this was you can call it i guess a cover zero look because the giants decided to bracket aj brown they were not going to allow aj brown to come inside you can see julian love walling aj brown off and then you have outside leverage with nick mcleod against aj brown so it's one-on-one -on -one matchups everywhere else darnay holmes is doing a good job on devonta smith it's just hey there's going to be that out route but it's going to be tight coverage ball needs to be placed perfectly and it absolutely was first down yep Sucks because this ends up being a touchdown drive, but sets up a first and 10 here. Just a little zone read action here with Miles Sanders. And I think you pointed this out and I thought it was fun too. You get to see a nice matchup here because Dexter Lawrence lined up right over the nose, right over Jason Kelsey, the best center in the NFL. Um, and you see a good battle between those two. Yeah. And Jason Kelsey ends up putting Dexter Lawrence on the deck. But if you watch it, this was not, this was a difficult block for Jason Kelsey. He attempts to, it, it's crazy how strong he is. And he gets help from Landon Dickerson. But he attempts to just kind of slingshot Dexter Lawrence away from the play. But Dexter Lawrence is so strong that he works back to the opposite A gap and then kind of closes it and allows other players to rally and make this tackle on Miles Sanders in his own read run. So it sets up a second and six here. Giants finally get a positive play here on the second and six to force the third and six, which is nice because you don't see it a lot in this game. It's an incomplete pass to Calcaterra. I think you can kind of see on this one that Hertz wasn't expecting, or we I think we just skipped past that. Yeah, it's right here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hertz wasn't really expecting KT to be where he was, Thibodeau, and that kind of screwed up what he wanted to do. Like he thought he was going to have that pass. And so he kind of throws outside shoulder after that. Um, but great, great play by the Giants. Good call by Wink here. Yeah, it is. Again, another empty formation. This is something that the Eagles have been doing all game. They're rotating their two high look to match the three receiver sides. So you have man coverage from the New York Giants. But Devonta Smith is over the middle of the field, and he is wide open here because the Giants have both of their defenders in the middle of the field, close safety, and then that other deep third defender off of Devonta Smith. But Kayvon Thibodeau just does a really good job just sinking underneath Calcaterra. And like you said, I think he expected Kayvon Thibodeau, if he realized that Kayvon Thibodeau was dropping, to match Devonta Smith. He's more of the threat. Right. But that's not what happened. And luckily the passes drop and the ball was not thrown to Devonta Smith. Cause that could have been a big game. Third and six situation. Another opportunity for the giants to get off the field, which they don't do middle of the field, close one high safety look. Um, and you'll see what you mentioned earlier, Nick hurts is just has that ability. If you rush him up the arc, he's going to just take, take the run like he should. And this is just kind of an easy eight yard run for him. It seems like a lot further. He protects too. himself. Like even as like an interesting, he does that like fall slide forward thing, whatever they call it. And it always, he always finds a way to not take these massive hits on these. I found it interesting that the giants rushed him so high with no quarterback spy. Like Tony Jefferson drops off into kind of like a, a middle hook zone. And it looks like they have whoever's breaking over the middle of the field, double team, but nobody was a quarterback spy on this play. I'm, seems like the running backs accounted for. I'm not sure if O'Shane Zimenez or whoever the other defender is near the line of scrimmage was supposed to drop off and, and disallow Jalen Hurts from running here, Nick McLeod, but it just doesn't happen. And that's just an easy eight yards. Yep. Easy eight yards is right. That sets up a next first and 10. Um, just going to get a little drag over the middle of the field. And this was kind of a, another pu a plus play for the Giants. Yeah, it's another plus play. The Giants do a a good job just fighting through the catch point. Darnay Holmes does on this deep horizontal cross to Devonta Smith. You can see how the Giants are in a too high defense pre-snap, and then they drop the strong. Well, I guess you could say it's the strong side, even though the tight ends on the opposite side. It's a three by one set with the nub. So the three receiver side, they drop Julian Love 
to rob the number two in breaking route. And who is that? Of course, it's AJ Brown. You can see how Wink Martindale is really paying attention to AJ Brown in this game, but it doesn't really necessarily matter. I felt like the pocket maneuverability from Jalen Hurts here to even put a catchable pass out there for Devonta Smith was pretty impressive on this play. We can watch it from the end zone angle. He has his eyes to the three receiver side, realizes it's not there because Julian Love steps up, whips his shoulders, gets his eyes where he wants to. It's a catchable pass, but good play by Darnay Holmes. Yep. Second and 10, they come back to the drag with Devontae Smith, knowing he is an uber athlete, little mesh drag here. And this time it catches the Giants because there's no Jalen Smith to tackle and, and, and close down the angle. You have to fight through all that that mesh nonsense. It's kind of reminding me of the touchdown from last week that uh, Fabian Rowe missed the tackle on. Just hard to fight over that trash, and they're not able to. Smith catches it and turns it into a 15-yard gain. Yeah, Devonta Smith aligns basically three yards outside of the tackle to the boundary side, runs across the middle of the field, has all that space to work with against Fabian Moreau with two Eagles routes getting in the way. And all Quez Watkins has to do is stand there. And I think there was a miscommunication between Quez Watkins and A.J. Brown. Because if you look at Quez Watkins, he turns and runs into A.J. Brown. And then at this point, you could see Quez Watkins look at A.J. Brown, and they're both kind of like discussing with each other, like what the hell happened there? Yep. Sets up a first and 10 here. Um, this was a shot play for the Eagles. It was a good route combination, but the Giants got a little bit lucky here with a drop from Devontae Smith. Yeah, Smith doesn't hold on to the football on, on this play, but it's really well placed. Coming across the middle of the field against Darnay Holmes with Pinnock over the top. Again, another three-by-one set with the nub. Giants are running a ton of man coverage at this point. So I'm surprised that Hurts isn't even burning him more. That he had that eight yard game before, but it looked like Jalen Smith might have been somewhat spying Jalen Hurts on this one play, and then he ends up kind of coming as a late blitzer. But it doesn't matter. This ball is placed really well. Smith just can't hold on to it. Yeah, right it, over the top of the underneath coverage and in between the safety, but drops it. Second and ten play. Um, they're going to run a little screen here, and. This time the Giants are ready, dialed in for it, and Darnay Holmes makes a really good stop here. And so finally, the Giants actually get themselves into a third and 10. I feel like Darnay Holmes as well in those types he of situations. Does. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's tough from a physical standpoint. But you're right, third and 10, and Giants have another successful play. And we're like, wow, man, look, Giants are going to, you know, they're, they're out of field goal range. What's going to happen? Maybe they'll force a punt, but we all know that's not exactly what happens. But this third and 10 call looks like the Giants – are showing blitz and then they bring a simulated pressure with Jason Pinnock and the other side, the other apex defender coming. So, well, it's not even, I guess, a simulated pressure. It's more of a fire zone. Yeah. So you can see how everyone drops off into coverage. You have five guys coming after Jalen Hurts. He kind of gets flushed out of the pocket. Nick McLeod, who was on the line of scrimmage, similar to what Jonathan Gannon was doing against the Giants offense, he bails into a deep third and takes the center field role. And then it's kind of like a, a three deep match type of defense. But Jalen Hurts has really nowhere to go with the football except for check it down to Quez Watkins, who had Tony Jefferson all over him. I was surprised he's even to get three yards out of that. Usually this ends up in a throw out of bounds, and that kind of maybe gave them a little more like feeling of they should go for it. This is an interesting spot, though. They're going for it for a fourth and seven, the 45. That's like a very disrespectful call, most people would say. <laughs> <laughs> or at the 41. Sorry, not the 45. I guess it's, look, I like that call especially if you have an offense like the Eagles, but it's not like it's, it's a little disrespectful. And then here you see the fourth and seven. This is the play you guys have seen. It's the whole shot to Devontae Smith that Julian Love plays from a uh, middle of the field, close single high actually reads it pretty well, Love, but then he just at the end makes a, makes a poor decision. Like his original read, he can see, you know, look, Hurt snaps his shoulders, goes that way. And the pressure is great too. That's the worst part about this play. You get a great pressure from Kayvon Thibodeau on this play against the great left tackle. And despite the pressure just being one second away from getting to Hertz and impacting the throw, um, yeah, you can just say, look, that's how close the Giants were to making a stop here. Jeez, man. Dexter so Lawrence. Cool. We'll see it from the end zone angle. Dexter Lawrence just dominates the guard. I think it's Landon Dickerson. And I don't know what happened with Julian Love because you're right. Julian Love, he's playing center field. This is just cover one with a, with a five-man pressure package from the Giants. You can see Julian Love is on it. Jalen Hurts hitting his back foot and his eyes are on. Devonta Smith, and you could see Julian Love is already starting to head in that direction outside the numbers, takes a solid angle. It's just he misjudges this point. But look at the trajectory on this football, Dan. Like it just kind of drops in there. It's not even like lead, it like drops. 
right. right into Devonta Smith's hands. It's just a poor play by Julian Love. Like we said, it's a little bit uncharacteristic. But man, you want to look at some of the bright spots from this game because there aren't a lot. It's this young pass rush because Kayvon Thibodeau takes Jordan Maialata to school here. And then we see what Dexter Lawrence does against Landon Dickerson. And damn, Jalen Smith takes an absolute shot from Dexter Lawrence. Takes a huge shot, but somehow not quick enough to impact the throw because you can see the trajectory there the ball placement it's all on point um i love that they take the shot you know take the slot vert here on a third a fourth and seven instead of just trying to go to the sticks i think all the best teams go past this throw past the sticks on these third and fourth down situations especially the verts because look you're playing to win the game you're playing to score touchdowns and explosive plays you're not playing to convert first downs those are the good teams um and so Great conversion here, unfortunately, for the Giants, but it can all be stopped, right? Like Julian Love can play this a little bit better and it's and it gets broken up. And look how Kayvon Thibodeau, look at how his feet are. Like, look how he outside jabs to open up, and you can see how Jordan Mailata's head goes to the outside. Hard inside jab to get Jordan Mailata to shift his momentum back to the inside, and then he engages his hands. And look how easy he turns this corner. Like, he creates this such a soft edge against Jordan Mailata, who's a pretty solid tackle. That's a really good pass rushing move to acquire the outside armpit and land that rip move. And then you look at Dexter Lawrence. I mean, he just goes right for a quick double swipe swim creates immediate separation. If you want to align and empty, that means there's only going to be a five-man protection package. You crowd the line of scrimmage, you end up sending five, but no, there's not going to be any help for Dexter Lawrence and Kayvon Thibodeau. You have one-on-one -on -one matchups to the left side of the line of scrimmage for, Philadelphia, for the Philadelphia Eagles, and two of them won their matchups. But like you said, man, just not quick enough. And you just, sometimes you just got to tip your cap to an amazing play by the opposing team. Yep, that's the only thing you can do when you see something like that happen. So it's 14 nothing Eagles, then you have the... Horrible punt situation from the Giants. Sets up a short field, 33-yard line, 14-0. This is kind of the death blow for the game. Once they go up 21-0, that's it, really. Uh, first play after that turnover or punt, whatever you want to call it. It's a 33-yard touchdown pass to A.J. Brown. Yeah, this is when it was like, wow, 21-0. The Eagles were just pouring it on. And this is just a really good route by A.J. Brown. You're going to see him take advantage of Nick McLeod. You know, Nick McLeod, bless his heart, but... How, how are you going to guard that? You have an inside yeah. release from A.J. Brown from a reduced stack. And you can see how A.J. Brown angles inside, angles inside, stacks, stacks Nick McLeod, yep. and then just breaks right back to the outside. The safety That's is playing true. over the top of the inside release. So there's nobody to the out. out. It's filthy. It's just dirty. Even it's the angle on the turn he takes there. I love that, too, at the very end. Once he stacks him, which is like the best thing you can do, just that angle. You know, it's not a wide angle, so the safety can cut it off. It's so tight. Look at how from tight six, his turn is. From a six foot four receiver. Yes. And you all, yeah, you that's also, the crazy part. Yeah, you run Quez Watkins on a drag, and if the Giants are in true man coverage, that means Darnay Holmes, it. who was outside, is going to yep. take him, right? Yep. And then you keep Grant Calcaterra, whoever that – tight end is you keep them close to the line of scrimmage. So there's no one who could sink to a depth to eliminate this. Yep. Well done by the Eagles, unfortunately. So 21, nothing at that point they're rolling. Um, the next drive, the fourth drive, the giants actually can get off the field on this one. It's a three and out for the Eagles, a rare three and out. Um, they start by taking, which we'll get to in a second here, a deep shot. Um, this one's the Quez Watkins here. They're backed up in their own end zone. This was, I believe after, the block punt touchdown. Um, let's see what happens here on this one. Pressure up the middle. This is good coverage by Fabian Moreau, who does a nice little speed turn to get back yeah. in the phase. They, and still the ball, almost, they still almost get it. Yeah, they do. And the Giants, Aziz Ojolari almost has a free shot. Miles Sanders kind of really bails out the quarterback. I don't not 100% certain how the protection broke down this way. I guess aligning Dexter Lawrence in one technique to that side really just – or maybe this is just blown by Siamalu because there's really no situation where Aziz Ojolari should come through the B gap in right. this manner because he could have killed Jalen Hurts there. Good job by Miles Sanders to pick him up and recognize what was going on. And that ball is thrown, catchable, a little bit of contact, no foul. Watkins falls out of bounds. Sets up a second and 10 situation. They go with an RPO. They're going to hand the ball off to Miles Sanders. He's going to create five yards here. Good tackle by Aziz Ojolari on this play, absorbing the contact from the tight end Good. on the split action and then just coming off of it and then making the play. Also, Jalen Smith using his hands against yeah, a really good, a good job getting off that block, Smith. Yeah, Lane Johnson, one of the best in the league, right? One of the best right tackles. Watch how Jalen Smith gets his eyes on the running back, uses his hands, stacks, sheds, makes the tackle. Textbook. Yep. 
third and five situation here. This was the best play of the game for the Giants defense by far. I thought you have Kayvon Thibodeau with a great individual pass rush that draws a hold. You have Aziz Ojolari with a great individual pass rush to eventually get the sack. I believe he gets credited for it. Or it might have been, I think it's a half half. I don't know exactly. No, what. it's actually Aziz Ojolari gets a full, and I'm not sure why, because I think Kayvon definitely deserved yeah, the sack here. For sure. But either way, best play of the game by the Giants defense by far. And as as we noted earlier, what who made the play? It wasn't a corner, it wasn't a linebacker, it was one of these two edge guys. Yeah, and Kayvon, look, he just wins right inside. That's his quickness. Watch how he judges the snap. Right when the snap is going, Kayvon Thibodeau is already initiating his rush. Jordan Maialata is looking at the snap, and he hasn't even started his pass yet. Like, Kayvon is already moving right at the snap. That is elite right there, Dan. That is an elite get-off, elite ability to judge the snap. And that's one reason why this play happened. It caused this hold, and then Azizo Jalari just uses a long-arm move, stacks Siamalu, and then watch how he breaks the contact of the outside arm of Siamalu with his own outside arm. Breaks that contact, hip to hip, and then just separate. Get right into the pocket, help sack Jalen Hurts. That's something you mentioned on Twitter, which I think you did a great job of, Nick. And just, you know, a silver lining we can take away, positives to look for. The hand usage from Ojolari has definitely improved from year one to year two. And that is just something that we think is, you know, pretty natural for defensive ends or edges in their second year. And that could be something to look out for for Thibodeau as well going into next year. It is. It's a, it's a timing thing, right? It's timing. Like it's a very prompt. If you miss time this, then you're just going to miss time it. And you're not winning this rep, but he gets it right as Siamalu goes to punch. And you can see how Siamalu's contact gets broken. His momentum comes forward. Ojolari also uses his inside arm to further that momentum forward by pulling Siamalu's shoulder downward. And then he just easily separates. I really think, man, the giants are in great hands with their defensive front with these two pass rushers. You incorporate Dexter Lawrence into it, man. And it's a, uh, should be should be a fun future for the defensive line. Agreed. It's easily the strength of the roster right now. Let's get to the fifth drive here. It's a six play, twenty four yard drive by the Eagles. It ends in a field goal. There's only two forty seven left when they start this drive. So they put on a little more points before the half. They start with a pistol formation. They run counter out of it. It's the first um, time we're seeing it this game. Yeah, because they were just so pass heavy before this. Now they're finally going to the run, and despite you know being so bass heavy they're able to just snap their fingers start to go to the run and create yardage yeah this is a uh a play where zizo jolari kind of gets pinned he takes on the the lead puller in a solid manner and he's expecting i think jalen smith to scrape over the top to help but he doesn't i could be wrong there but that's what i'm that's kind of what my first inclination was because mike mcfadden goes right into the hole takes on the lead blocker and the desired hole for the Eagles offense. It's taken up, right? But Miles Sanders bounces it outside. Aziz Ojolari kind of wrong arms here, and he can't contain. There's no secondary force defender, and Jalen Smith doesn't scrape over the top. I'm not sure if there was a scrape replace situation. Either way, this ends up going for a solid gain for the for the Eagles with nine yards. Yeah, sets up a second and one. Pull a little Mike Kafka here with the same exact play. <laughs> Um, this time an even better result for the Eagles. That's a nine yard gain. Now this time it's a 14 yard gain and you could just see the linebackers for the giants are really just taken out of the play. I mean, that's, you're not going to be able to stop the run. If your linebackers look like this on a run play. I think this one is more so on Jalen Smith too, because Micah McFadden reads it. He is the play side linebacker. He sees the block down. He sees the pullers and he comes yeah, he in tight. His gap, right. He takes the sniffer out. Azizo Jalari goes wide with the tight end, chips the tight end. And then he sets wide. Now you have a huge gap to contain for, but Jalen Smith never even gets Here's over there. The I have to ask you about though, Nick. It's like when you see, that's my question. Like when you start to see the movement, if you're Jalen Smith and you're reading that from the Eagles offensive line, you know, it's counter like attack, like be a little bit more instinctive, be faster. So that second, that, that offensive lineman can't climb to the next level coming off the double team and then get you and take you out of the play. Like that's the thing they need. That. He's running over there. It's just my lot of, but he's not fast enough. No, my Lada does a good job too. Just kind of easy chip on Mondu who gets blocked out of the play and then just climbs. And this is something that Smith has struggled with all year. And it's ironic. I mean, not ironic. It's sadly enough better than what Tay Crowder can do in these types of situations as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Unfortunately. Damn, these linebackers really need help. Yeah, they're they're they can't be the starters next year, no matter what. Like I would Go to my grave saying I'd rather Isaiah Hodgins running routes the way we've seen at that rate or Dar and or Darius Slayton than have these linebackers again if I can only pick one of the two. And I won't. They'll be able to upgrade both most likely, which is good. 
But, Look what um, like Roquan Smith has done for Baltimore. Yeah, it's changed the whole defense. Literally changed, changed that whole defense. Exactly. So this has been working. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, this has been working, right? Like counter. This is the yeah. third straight first and 10 counter run. You're going to use the guy in motion just like you did before. Only this time the Giants kind of flipped their defense a little bit, but there's still no contain to the outside. But you can see now Kayvon Thibodeau is to the right side of the screen, which is the side they run towards. You can see how Kayvon Thibodeau gets right into that tight end stacks, and there's no room to, to penetrate the C-gap. Like The C-gap is eliminated, and you have Jason Pinnock close to the line of scrimmage. And I'm not sure if Pinnock – actually, I think Pinnock is probably that contained defender, but now the guard realizes that that hole was eliminated by Ryder Anderson and Kayvon Thibodeau. So he's just going to bounce everything outside and pin Pinnock. And then Jalen Smith has a ton of space from basically the numbers of the sideline to work to push Miles Sanders out of bounds, which he got help from Nick McLeod from. But three straight counter runs that weren't fit perfectly by the Giants. The last one was the best one, and it was only five yards, and it was down in the red zone. And this sets up that second and five play that Nick was actually referencing at the top of the podcast here, where you see the Giants play this pretty well here. Um, uh, Nick kind of broke it down already, but this ends up going for a five-yard gain. Yeah, this is a... A play where the Giants just have two quarterback spies and they're also acting as underneath defenders with both of their linebackers, man coverage with Julian Love also just kind of looking at anything, or actually, I think it's Jason Pinnock looking at anything coming across the middle of the field at the top. And I think Jalen Hurts saw that Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari were rushing high side. He's just going to run it, but he can't. There's nowhere for him to go. And Ryder Anderson gets his first career sack. Yeah, good for Ryder Anderson. Good for now it sets up a third and goal situation. The Giants come out with a cover zero here. They're just going to say F it. They do this sometimes in these tight red zone situations here. I think they drive. It wasn't actually a cover zero call, though. Um, it just looked like it to me at first. What was this cover zero? It yeah, is cover zero. zero. There's, yeah, no, there's no safety out there's there. There's no safety help, right? He, he comes down and gives the opportunity. This actually was close to being a touchdown anyway, but just a little bit off from a ball placement standpoint. Yeah, it's a little, it's off from a ball placement standpoint. The Giants get pressure. They send, I believe, five at Jalen Smith, and then Nick McLeod acts like he's coming and then kind of sinks underneath, acting as a quarterback spy. Yeah, acting- Kayvon Thibodeau gets to that spot. Yeah, he's if we watch for- real, this is a really good get off. Yeah, it's Kayvon Thibodeau, man. Like he's he doesn't mess around with this. You're going up against Lane Johnson. You have a one on one matchup. I think I mentioned this at the top of the show too. Look at what Wink Martindale's doing. He's going to align four guys to the right of the defense with Kayvon Thibodeau and O'Shane Zimenez to the left. And O'Shane Zimenez is going to drop off and match the running back. And what this is going to do when you align four guys and then Jason Pinnock, who also ends up coming on this blitz, showing it pre-snap, the entire Eagles protection is going to slide away from Kayvon Thibodeau, isolating him against Lane Johnson. Now, Lane Johnson is great. He can exist on an island, but watch how Kayvon Thibodeau wins that man. Like he gets around the edge and he puts Lane Johnson into a stressful situation. Just right. he attacks the shoulders kind of like a double swipe, but then something that came on Thibodeau has really just done really well over the last couple of weeks is get to that rip move, get to that outside shoulder. He gets to the outside yeah. shoulder and he, I think makes contact on Jalen hurts arm right there, or he just yeah. off to maybe help this throw go out of bounds. Yep. And so they get off the field there fours for three here. Now he, Going to the next drive, which will be the one right after halftime. This one's a six, or I'm sorry, an eight play, 63 yard drive. The Giants do hold him at the end for a field goal. This was another one where we talked about the throw earlier to Miles Sanders, the beautiful throw that they called incomplete. It's another one that was like inches away from being an incredible throw from Jalen Hurts on a third and 11 call, um, but it was just out of bounds. And here's the first big run by the Eagles in this game. They've had a couple, they had a 14 yarder, a nine yarder. Now they snap, snap one off for 22 yards here. And I thought this was some really, really nifty running from Miles Sanders. It was great running from Miles Sanders. And just look at this front. Like I look at this with the running back offset to that direction. And I'm like the giant, if they're running the football in that way, the giants are screwed up. I'm I'm not really sure why wing Martindale employed it in in this manner with this personnel package, right? Like Aziz Ojolari, you already saw that they wanted to run at him. They ran those GH counter plays twice directly at Aziz Ojolari. And on this play, you have a tight end and Lane Johnson to that side. The tight end comes in a split action to pick up Micah McFadden, who's the backside defender. But then you just have blockers up in space and you block. All you have to do is successfully double team Dexter Lawrence. And you have Julian Love and and uh, and Jalen Smith kind of playing Jalen Hurts. Like this is kind of the Jalen Hurts effect. They take themselves out of position. 
and you could just see there's really no one at the second level to account for Miles Sanders. That's a tough spot for for the Giants defense, and it just didn't seem like it was aligned perfectly pre-snap. Then on at the next first down, the Eagles make an interesting call here. Quarterback power with Jalen Hurts using Sanders as almost like a lead blocker. This was a really interesting call. I liked it because Sanders was able to take out like that end man from the line of scrimmage. Um, and in doing so, it creates a nice, easy hole for the Eagles here and for Hurts. And yeah, 13 yard gain. Directly at Aziz Ojolari once again. Aziz Ojolari he fights through the tight end like chip and posi positions himself right into the hole. But Miles Sanders, that's a Physical play by Miles Sanders to lead block and big game for Jalen Hurts. Yep. And that will be the next first down. That was a 13 yarder. Now it's a five yard run out of the pistol with another counter run here. Um, and this time it's run toward Thibodeau. And you can kind of see the contrast there between when these counters are run at Thibodeau versus when they're run at Ojolari. Yeah. Thibodeau's very good. He keeps everything narrow, block down, step down rules, keep everything tight. And there's not a lot of rushing room for Miles Sanders there. And Micah McFadden quickly fills and does a good job doing so, but I don't know why he just can't make this tackle. He just spins off it, surrenders like an extra two or three yards. Lane Johnson just removes Ryder Anderson from this play. Uh, hopefully the Giants can can have a tackle tandem as effective as this coming in the future, right? Like once Evan Neal comes into his own, that's like the big hope right now, Dan, is once Evan Neal comes into his own, then – the Giants might have like one of the best tandems at tackle, similar to what the Eagles have right now. Yeah, that would be the hope uh, for sure. I mean, that, that would change their whole franchise, in my mind at least. Um, you're seeing here another big run by the Eagles here. This is just a pistol formation, little quarterback read. This is an interesting play, actually. I've never kind of seen it run like this at a pistol. Um, and this is a huge gain, 24-yard gain for Hertz here. This is a very good play. You just have the lead blocker, 81. He chips, and then he climbs. And now you have two blockers on Jalen Smith and Nick McLeod in space. Huge run by the quarterback at a pistol. Just simple zone read. Keep it. Great decision by Hertz. Now, first and 10 situation here. This is probably the best play of the game, I thought, from Micah McFadden here. He forces. A, it's a one-yard loss for the Eagles. He plays it really well. This is what I want to see more from the linebackers, right? Like, this is just the type of stuff, at least in the run game. The pass game, to me, is just an absolute disaster. I see nothing good from the linebackers ever in the pass game, to be honest with you, Nick. And that is what really bothers me. But the run game is just not, like, there's some good moments, and then there's a lot of bad moments. But at least there's some good moments. So, more of these, right? Like, these are the types of plays you want from a linebacker, right? Reading it perfectly, getting around the blocker, and making the tackle for a loss. Dude, look at how pissed Jason Kelsey gets. Cause this is, again, this is a pistol run to Boston Scott and Micah McFadden benefits a little bit from Jason Kelsey connecting knees with Henry Mondu. You can right. see how he connects knees and that's going to slow Kelsey down. But then Micah McFadden just sheds Kelsey and makes this play impressive for McFadden. Look how pissed Kelsey is right there. He throws his hands. Like he screams probably an obscenity that we're not going to say on this podcast at that moment. Yeah. It's rare that he gets beat in that way. Um, so it's a one-yard loss. Second and 11 here. Looks like there's a bit of a mis miscommunication, and it leads to an incomplete pass um, to set up a third and 11. Yeah, here's the second and 11, Dan. The miscommunication is just, I think it, A.J. Brown thought he was going to run a quick post corner, and Jalen Hurts thought he had the post. I mean, either way, I think A.J. Brown has the leverage. He has the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Like right here, it makes sense to run the post, right? But Nick McLeod, I don't know, man. Would Nick McLeod have had the post corner route if that's what AJ Brown and, and Jalen Hurts decided to run? Because Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown just weren't on the same page. And it looks like Nick McLeod does a really good job recovering from the fake post. Wow, that's a really impressive rep from Nick McLeod. Yeah, he does a great job there. No, Watch how he, he steps down, and that's a quick transition. Like if we're yeah. looking for things to be to be happy about, this is one. Like he doesn't bite. Uh, he doesn't bite in a in a. Dis in an undisciplined manner, right? Like he steps down and then he's reading AJ Brown this entire time. Keeps his eyes on his hips and he would have put himself right back in phase. Now, AJ Brown could easily win that 50 50 matchup. He's an absolute beast in those situations, but I still think this is a, a really good play from Nick McLeod, even though it's an incomplete pass that he had nothing to do with. Yep, exactly. It sets up this third down. Giants get a little lucky here. This is very close to being a First and goal at the one. Another great anticipatory throw by Hertz is fourth that I counted, at least in the game. Throws it before the receiver's out of the break. Puts it right in between that. It's a whole shot right in between the coverage uh, from the D-back and the safety who's making his way over the top. Hertz is not afraid to throw any of these whole shots. He just throws them early, 
with anticipation and doesn't give a crap about where that's what the safety is going to do. And I haven't still haven't seen it play yet this game where the safety made a play on it. So I understand why he's so aggressive, but luckily for the giants, basically it's just luck. In my opinion, um, it's out of bounds slightly. If you look how impressive the release from Devonta Smith is or Devonta Smith, watch how he is angling inside, angling inside yeah. hard step and watch Darnay Holmes match it. He's just, inching inside, inching inside. Devonta Smith with this release off the line of scrimmage is just giving him so much leverage to the outside. And then he explodes. And Darnay Holmes is not in any position. Feet get stuck in mud. He reaches. He's in no position to make a play on this football. And the safety who's on the hash is not going to be able to get there. That's just a well-designed and executed play by, by Shane Steichen and Nick Sirianni's offense. Yeah, but luckily it was just like a step or a foot out of bounds, I think. Yeah, it was really close, but I think it was a, a step, yeah. So that's a field goal. Next drive is their seventh possession of the game. This will be a, an eight-play, 63-yard drive with a touchdown. They're pouring it on. We get a two-yard run by Miles Sanders here. You can see how the Eagles are pulling their backside linemen. That's to no surprise, but they're staying square to the line of scrimmage, kind of like these skip pulls. Felt like Kayvon Thibodeau had good discipline to just force Jalen Hurts to hand that football off because if he bit down, this could have been ugly for the New York Giants and Jalen Hurts, and then the Giants aggressively play the the backside of where Miles Sanders is aligned to. Like you could see they're blitzing Julian Love right down or Darnay Holmes right off the ass of the tackle and they end up making this quick tackle for only a two yard game. Sets of a second and eight Eagles go back to mesh because mesh has been working really well. Mesh is just something I mean look teams are going to run mesh against the Giants. They have been all year because why? The Giants play a lot of man and they don't have linebackers who are good in coverage. That's a recipe for running mesh and having a good time running mesh. And so it's just simple and it's 14 yards. It's super easy and he's wide open. And this is to that nub tight end on the backside of a three by one set. There's just so much ground that the covering defender right. has to, has to cover. And it's not even like the traffic from Darnay Holmes get really gets in the way. It's just so much space. And at this point, I just feel like Philadelphia is doing whatever they want against the Giants. Yeah, right. They they pass the ball with ease with the pass heavy approach. The first three drives, three touchdowns. Then they said, "All right, we'll run a little and we'll run some counter." They ran it with ease, and so it's just like whatever they really want to do, they're able to do here. Um, but we do get an incomplete pass here with a second fire zone call from Wink in this game. Um, you're just you're just like throwing things at like. At this point, it's like, why not, right? Like, try something different here and throw a fire zone, and, and it worked. I mean, the blitz gets there. The pressure gets there. Hertz reads that the hot is to Sanders, but it's actually covered well by Jalen Smith. Yeah, I have the – I'm not sure who that is. Tony Jefferson, I think, drops off the line of scrimmage. I mean, you have a five-man pass rush, and uh, it, no one who's not a pass rusher traditionally drops off, but Tony Jefferson just kind of sitting there. I feel like Jalen Hurts, if he waited, he had – this tight end wide open in the middle of the field because Tony Jefferson didn't get over there in time. And Jalen Smith was removed from that area to match Miles Sanders. But luckily, Kayvon Thibodeau had enough pressure to force Jalen Hurts to throw the football incomplete. Yep, and that will set up a second and 10 here. Giants with another cover zero look. No safety. Uh, quick slant for A.J. Brown for nine yards. Yeah, against Nick McLeod. They're just going to strike on things like that. And it's going to set up a third and one where... Eagles basically come right out of the gate and snap the football pitch to Miles Sanders. And this is the Giants getting caught in another pretty piss poor alignment. You're expecting the Eagles to probably quarterback sneak on this third and one. But look, you have four guys inside of the tackle box. They're not going to allow the Giants to to or the Eagles to quarterback sneak. Look at where Miles Sanders is aligned. He's aligned offset a little bit, right, with Jalen Hurts under center. This is an easy halfback pitch. You have how many Eagles to the right side of the screen who could just block down and really no Giants to account for it. So just take advantage of what's going on. An easy run for Miles Sanders. That gets sprung for a long gain on a third and one. Yeah, that's tough. That's a tough one for the Giants. So first and 10, a little pistol here. Once again, they're going to go back to the counter here. Giants finally ready for it. Um, Crowder is in the game on this one, plays it pretty well, and it's a two-yard gain here. Yep, Crowder fills pretty quickly. Soon enough, we're not going to see great stuff from Tay Crowder, but okay. you know that play was solid, I'd say. Zone read on this next second and eight call, and Eagles are able to take it for an 11-yard run. They love running pistol. They absolutely do. And Jalen Hurts, you have Jihad Ward, who stays put. He but, bites oh. down a little bit to... To in anticipa 
in anticipation for the split blocker, but he just ends up being a lead blocker. Tay Crowder fills. So this is an easy read for Jalen Hurts. And you're not going to catch Jalen Hurts in space in that in that situation if you're Jahad Ward, who's closing in on 300 pounds. Yeah, exactly. It's a tough spot for him against an athletic player like that. So now it's finally a first and goal situation here. Once again, the Eagles just say F it, run with a quarterback, a design quarterback play. And look at Jason Kelsey. This is what makes him such a special player. 62. He's able to make that block. That's a really tough block for any sender. I don't, I don't like all the tape we've watched. I haven't seen a center move the way he does. No, neither have I. And he actually gets He's stepped on too. That's the crazy by part. Landon Dickerson. Watch how he gets stepped on by Landon Dickerson. You have Mylotta doing a skip pull, staying square to the line of scrimmage. And this is kind of like a bucket step from, from uh, Jason Kelsey, right? Like, which is something that happens on a lot of zone type plays, but he steps back deep back with that one foot, right? With that inside foot. And then he just takes the angle right to take Crowder to basically just meet him at the line of scrimmage. That is such a good play by Kelsey who just is not slowing down. Yeah. Touchdown. He really takes Crowder out of the play and it's a touchdown. So now they're just pouring it on at this point. The game's over. Um, it's been over, I guess at this point already, but we'll go to this one final drive. It's a three and out. We'll end it on a positive note and then we'll run through those final fourth quarter drives that were not, uh, you know, really meaningful in this game, but is what it is. So they start with a counter here and giants at this point are, are, are ready for the counter, I think. And they play it really well. Pinnock makes a nice play. You can see how the giants are just really keeping everything tight. Pinnock does a good job. He almost gets sucked into Calcaterra's block, but then he flows back to the outside. And as Miles Sanders is spilt in that direction, he ensures that he's contained. Sets of a second and 10. This is a coverage sack here. Ojolari gets credited with the sack. Good job by the giants defense here. A successful call. Yeah. Getting Aziz Ojolari some stats, right? I mean, he hasn't played that much this season, but it's nice to see him kind of getting some statistical markers, even though he's taking advantage of a tight end. And it was more so of a coverage sack because Jalen Hurts had seemed like what three plus seconds yeah. to throw this football. So let's take a look at the coverage middle of the field, close pre-snap giants, just running cover three and they do a good job clamping down on AJ Brown's horizontal cross. Devonta Smith, he's covered well. You can see how the safety Jason Pinnock is playing over the top. And then Jalen Smith, this is a good play from a linebacker. Jalen Smith sinks underneath the cross. There's really nowhere for Jalen Hurts to go with the football. It's just three routes out there, and they're all covered up pretty well. And that sets up a third and 18. Eagles are just going to run a quick pass to Watkins, and it doesn't go for much. And the Giants force a punt. Oh, what's going on? Yes, something that the Giants did not do much of in this game. Yep. Um, so we'll just run through the rest of these drives, I think, at this point and let it roll the tape um, as we kind of go into our superlatives. Unless you want to do one more drive, Nick. No, nah, no, nah, we can run through it. Let me just okay, pull it up. Yeah. The next drive is is just for those who are following. It's the one that ends in the long touchdown run for Miles Sanders. We have a 40-yard run. So we, we do get a Zion Gilbert sack to start this drive. And it's just Wink Martindale bringing a six-man pressure and nobody accounts for Zion Gilbert. I felt like it was really disguised well. But you can see, Giants have four guys on that side over the bunch. Remember before, there was only three over the bunch? Well, one reason, and there are several reasons, but one reason is because Gilbert is going to blitz, and Jalen Hurts wants to keep it. Look, he wants to keep it, and you can see how Jalen Smith does a good job kind of quarterback spying and positioning himself right next to where Miles Sanders is. Kayvon Thibodeau rushes high side. Just nowhere for Jalen Smith to go with the football. But yeah, we can get into our superlatives now. Yeah, let's do them. Uh, we'll start with the highest effort player on tape for you. Kayvon Thibodeau, I think is the highest ever yeah. player on tape. I think it could be several different guys, but Kayvon Thibodeau, man, he, he plays with his head on fire. He really does. And I feel like he's getting a bad rap because he's not finishing off on some sacks and he wasn't credited for a sack on that one play that definitely looked like a sack. But regardless of the fact, I, I think Kayvon Thibodeau is really playing in a solid manner this entire season. And it's, it's not just as a pass rusher. It's also as a run defender. So I'm going to go with KT. I'm also going with Thibodeau. I just feel like there were so many examples of it. I mean, it's it's either Love or Thibodeau for me. I think Pinnock, maybe, but I'll give it to Thibodeau. How about the unheralded player on tape for you? Unheralded player on tape? Hmm. See, I'm not really 100% sure. I think Nick McLeod could get it, but he got toasted for the touchdown, so that's probably not something I'm going to to go with. Aziz Ojolari struggles against the run. I'm going to go with, I guess, Jason Pinnock. I think he's a player that that had a solid overall game. But 
it's hard to even have an unheralded player when your defense performs this bad, but let's yeah, go. Pinnock. It's hard to have unheralded. It's hard to have best. I'm going to go with Jalen Smith. I really like the play you broke down earlier on that. You know, it's hard to take a receiver on a drag like Devonte Smith, a Heisman winner with incredible burst and explosiveness and cut that angle off and turn that into nothing. And I thought he had some good instinctive plays in the run game as well. It wasn't perfect for him. It's never going to be. He's not somebody who should be starting, but I thought he had an unheralded game. How about best player on film for you? Best player on film, probably Kayvon Thibodeau still. Definitely. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm going Thibodeau too. I mean, Lawrence had some really good moments as well, but I really like this film from Thibodeau. I thought there were some really good pass rushing reps. So Thibodeau for me as well. How about pass rushing grade one through 10? Pass rushing grade one for, through 10, it's going to be solid, right? I mean, I feel like the Giants were able to get pressure, but their main issue was the fact that Jalen Hurts was just scorching hot throughout this yeah. entire game. So let's... Yeah go with a 7.4 i think that's fair like the pressure was there the pass rush reps individual reps individually were there seven three seven three pretty close to the same thing to uh for you there um that wasn't really an issue how about the run defense one through ten yikes uh, <laughs> um let's go with a Maybe how bad we are as a run defense we used to be a team that was like every year at least we had the run defense <laughs> I know. No, they really were. And it's still not like this team is getting dominated at the point of attack. It's the same no. issues that cropped up in week three and were exposed again against Jacksonville in week seven and then Seattle and then just kind of go down the line. Seattle, not um, Seattle. It wasn't because they ran zone so much and, and not the power gap or the counter, right. but the counter game is so bad. We could probably do a grade on the counter game <laughs> itself, but let's go with a two one, I guess could be lower. Yeah, I'll go with a one four. I think when the Eagles wanted to run, they did it with ease. I thought the quarterback runs were too easy. Um, they didn't run a lot because they didn't have to, but when they did, they destroyed the Giants. So it's it's tough to give any kind of grade that's better than that. So we'll wrap up there. Unfortunately for the Giants, this was not a good game film for the defense. Like we said, we'll we'll, we'll break it down. We'll bury it. A few bright spots, but not too many. Um, we'll turn the page because Washington is a game that, you know, if the Giants win on Sunday night, they're going to be in a really good position to make the playoffs, I think, because I want to count any game as a must win, as an easy win, I should say, at this point with the way they're playing. But I feel like they should be able to beat that Colts team. Um, we'll see what happens, but I definitely feel like they should have the edge there. I do, too. And they're going to need to if they want to make the playoffs. And it sucks, man. The Giants are in a position right now, Dan, where where we had zero expectations coming into the year, but after you go six and one, you establish expectations. And now mm. we're like, oh, this team sucks, man. We got to fire this guy and fire that guy. It's like, we're being a little bit irrational with that, but you never want to start six and one and then not make the playoffs. That's embarrassing. It's kind of reminds me of what happened with the Arizona Cardinals last year. I think they were seven and one and they ended up making the playoffs, but they got bitched by the Los Angeles Rams. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens. But Sunday night is, this is going to be telling. That's, yep. that's what I'll say. Yeah, we'll see how they come out in that one. Obviously, what you said earlier this week or last week still stands out to me, though. The, they got the bye week and the extra week to prepare for the Giants, Washington. They do have a massive edge from a game planning standpoint, unfortunately, and just from a health standpoint with the bye week. But that is what it is. You're just gonna, you have to deal with that. You have to play through that. And it doesn't really matter. If the Giants want to make the playoffs, they have to win these types of games. Like, no, no more excuses, no, nothing really. So we'll see what happens. We'll see who's back. We could get some players back for that. I'm really hoping a Zudu or Bredesen, like especially a Zudu, just I would love to see some kind of change on that offensive line on the interior to help maybe give them a boost. They need it. And Mark Lewinsky, I think, would easily be the odd man out. He continues to be an issue. Maybe you can jumble it up, put Gates back at center, Feliciano at right guard, and then Azuto at left guard. That's a lot of moving pieces, and it's not ideal in this situation. But the offensive line isn't ideal in this situation, so I think everything has to be considered. Yep. All right. Thanks again for tuning in to the Big Blue Banter podcast. Stay locked and loaded. We haven't done a mailbag in a while, so there's probably a ton of good questions. I see already. I know three of you have DM me questions that have all been good. Really good, I should say. So I'm going to try. I will remember those when we compile, but I'll send something out tomorrow morning uh, collecting mailbag questions and maybe tomorrow night as well. We'll probably record on Thursday and then a preview pod as well. So big game coming up. Keep it locked and loaded. Have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you soon.